the Indianapolis Colts racked up 2,130 rushing yards on 4.5 yards per attempt and boasted the number three ranked offensive line according to PFF. Marlon Mack went over 1,000 yards rushing and added eight touchdowns on the ground. Their guard Quentin Nelson has the best two-year run blocking grade and what used to be a weakness for the Colts has been totally revamped in the last few years. With 320 yards receiving, Naheem Hines adds speed and a receiving threat out of the backfield, and the scheme run by Frank Reich since coming over from Philadelphia has set the Colts up for success. Reich's diverse run game creates lanes and different looks similar to the way that Shanahan does in San Francisco and the Ravens have done with Lamar Jackson. Coming from the Andy Reid and Doug Peterson coaching tree, Reich differs from Shanahan and McVay mainly in his lack of pre-snap motions and shifts, and he uses multiple schemes as the foundation of his run game versus Shanahan's adherence to the outside zone. He definitely still uses some window dressing, but Reich largely attacks defenses in the multitude of ways he asks his linemen to block. A lot of teams subscribe to slight variations of inside zone or outside zone, a few sprinkle in power and pin and pull schemes. Frank Reich does it all. We'll start with their use of outside zone and stretch and then progress to the multiple looks that the Colts gave defenses. The biggest difference between outside zone and stretch is the aiming point in the track of the offensive line and the running back. In outside zone, this aiming point is typically off tackle. In the stretch scheme, the aiming point is the force defender outside, usually an outside linebacker or a strong safety, but the basic concepts are the same. You can see the wider aiming point from the running back here and just how athletic and impressive this Colts offensive line is to be able to take these angles to seal defenders. Here the Colts run outside zone weak away from a tight bunch formation with number 84 Jack Doyle and two receivers. This causes some alignment issues for the Jaguars as they're now strapped to maintain a numbers advantage to either side. They have 6 on 5 to the strong side with a corner off the screen and 3 on 3 to the weak side with a middle field safety. Simple math says to run weak, and that's just what the Colts do. Since the defensive end is playing a wide 9 technique, the play side tackle doesn't even try to reach and scoop him and instead drives him up and out of the play. Quentin Nelson, number 56, does a great job fighting to get his hips square and keep the defender inside his frame, which allows the running back to get outside. Once he gets outside, it's the running back on the safety who's 15 yards down the field. And this isn't anything wild or schematically crazy. Reich just set up a formation to put the defense in conflict and then took advantage of the numbers. When the outside does get walled off and that aiming point outside the tackle or the force defender is taken away, all the Colts running backs do a really good job of reading and cutting underneath flowing defenders. Since the Colts are so effective at reaching and getting outside, it forces linebackers to scrape over the top more aggressively, which then opens up those cutback lanes backside, which is exactly why the outside zone can be so effective for backs with good vision. They'll also run outside zone out of a split back formation, which isn't something that you see a ton. This again gives the Colts the numbers advantage, there's four defenders on four blockers, and it's the backside inside linebacker that has to scrape across all that traffic and make the play downfield. Sometimes the Colts offensive line doesn't even need the formational help though. They can straight up just be more athletic and seal off linebackers and defensive ends all on their own. A small wrinkle to add to the outside zone look is to put in a split flow with the H-back coming across the formation to attack the backside defensive end who's usually left unblocked. This allows for more space on cutbacks in case defensive ends or outside linebackers stay tight to the line and hold contained. Defenses are falling asleep on that backside crunch action. The Colts will just hand it off to the H coming across on a jet action. A cool addition to that outside zone track of the running back that I absolutely love is the power shovel pitch underneath it. The track of the running back stays the same, but the play side defensive end is left unblocked now, and the backside guard is pulling around as if he's running power. If the unblocked defensive end comes upfield, the guard should go underneath him and up to the linebackers for the pitch option for the H. If the end stays flat or comes down the line, you give it to the running back. I'm also a big fan of shifting into this split back formation with one of their receivers, Pascal, to give a different look and then to hand it to him on the outside zone with Ashton Doolin, another one of their receivers, being the pitch option underneath. You can see the same concept here, this time with the guard pulling up and through the hole with Jack Doyle, their normal tight end, being the pitch option underneath. The Colts also like to run a pin and pull concept with their athletic linemen. They'll even trust smaller receivers like number 14, Zach Pascal, to wall off and pin defensive ends when they're in tight splits close to the offensive linemen. This makes it tough for linebackers and defensive tackles to scrape across that pin and allows for bigger guys to get in space and block smaller defensive backs. The rest of the line runs a stretch and seal concept where they sprint to get leverage to the play side and then wall off defenders, almost like a punt return or a kick return to one side of the field. 
They run it both with and without a receiver, and it's just as lethal with a tackle penny as a wide receiver in a tight play. While they don't do a ton of motions and shifts, one of my favorite window dressing plays is a simple down block concept that they run that has everyone in the line attack and steal the first person of their inside shoulder and then have the H come across on a crunch that works almost like a single person counter. It was super effective and opened up huge holes. Both times, Reich runs it off of a shift which forces the defense to communicate and realign and then he would quick snap it coming back across the same side that the shift came from. And now the defense isn't aligned correctly and they have to scramble to get back in position. Throw in some jet sweep or orbit motions, now you've got defenses totally out of position with linebackers tracking the jet and filling in correctly, which allows for the Colts offensive line to take good angles and open up huge holes for Mack and company to take advantage of. Watch the linebackers and see how many of them track and go at the orbit motion instead of staying play side with the running back. So now if you're a defensive end or linebacker, you can get stretched and sealed on an outside zone kicked out by an H on split zone, run underneath on a shovel option, or pinned by a receiver or an offensive tackle. It makes their job incredibly tough and gives false read keys for the linebackers as well. Add some window dressing and flare on top of it and you're asking a whole lot of every single one of the defensive players in the run game. Receivers can end up in the backfield at H, motion, released on play action, and the list goes on. Break has completely transformed the Colts running game. The diversity and look that they give teams every single week makes them difficult to prepare for, and with a stable of capable backs and Mack, Hines, Wilkins, and now Jonathan Taylor taking in the third round of the 2020 NFL Draft, the Colts are going to be a tough team to stop on the ground. Throw in Phillip Rivers to keep defenses honest, and the Colts could absolutely win the AFC South. Frank Reich has built the offense to live off the run game. Now that they have a potential Hall of Fame quarterback again, they should absolutely give the Ravens and the Chiefs a run for their money to represent the AFC in the Super Bowl. If you liked what you saw, please like and subscribe. It helps us out tremendously. Comment below who you'd like me to analyze next, and make sure to check out our website, weeklyspiral.com, where you can read all our latest content, including a written form of this video with GIFs. You can also find our Patreon and social handles and all that stuff there as well. Until next time, I'm Casey Sully, and I'll see you on the next Film Breakdown.